Well, all right, hey, welcome back. We're going to do an acoustic theme video today. And this lesson is really gonna tie in with a performance video I submitted for the great channel, Five Watt World. And Keith's doing a bunch of different Martin videos in the upcoming weeks and months. And he said, hey, could you submit something on Dreadnought for me to use as the soundtrack? So I said, of course, love to work with you. And in the video and in the performance, we're gonna be in the key of and I did this sixth interval thing, which is pretty synonymous with acoustic guitar. You hear it a lot, and you hear it a lot in country, but if I'm playing a D chord, I might play something like this. And then for a G, maybe something back to D, and so on and so forth, over an A. So lots of those kinds of moves. That's called a sixth because if we were to count up or down six degrees from a D, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's that F sharp below it, and it's a sixth below. Now you'll often hear a D and an F together, or F sharp, and that would be a third. So in addition to calling this a sixth, you can also call it an inverted third. And that's for the super theory folks out there. But what I'm gonna do in the lesson portion is teach you how to attack each one of those chords in the key of G. With those fingerings and with that interval. I think it'll be a lot of fun. So this song or this track is going to be sort of a stripped down version of what I played for Five Watt World. It's just going to be D, G, A, D, simple chords, and we're gonna target it with this sixth interval. Lots of fun, and of course, you can use it on an electric guitar. All right, let me jam a little bit for you, and then we'll play it to the track, and we'll slow it down, and we'll talk about it, and I'll teach you how to use it. Let's do it. All right, so let's break down the shapes and the theory and really make sure that you understand this concept on the most basic level because you can start using this without really understanding the theory. With When it comes to guitar stuff, I like to get it in your hands first and then we can kind of reverse engineer it later on if we so choose, okay? So we're in the key of D and our chords are just going to be D for four bars, G for two bars, back to D, two more bars, and then to A and then the D. Then it cycles back around and it starts again on D. And we'll do all that with the track, all right? So what we're going to do is take a D note. Now, if you don't know D major scales, that's okay right now because all I want you to do is pay attention to the fingering. The root note, what I consider to be the root, is that D right there. And the F sharp note on the fourth string, fourth fret, is six notes away from it. And how I attack this is with my pick and my middle finger on my right hand. So that's perfectly legal and sounds great over a D chord as you heard. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to the next shape. 
and that's going to give us an E and a G. Okay? You don't need to know why, just need to know that those are the notes. Otherwise, we'd be here for an hour talking about theory. Nobody wants to do that in this lesson. So you got D, think about that as D, then E on the top there, second string, fifth fret, and then a G on the fifth fret, fourth string. And notice how I changed up the fingerings. These are the only two fingerings you're going to need for this kind of idea. And you can almost start to play a D major scale this way. One, two, skip two frets, same fingering. And you're going to get now an F sharp and an A. Now the beautiful thing about this is that an F sharp on the second string, seventh fret, and that A on the fourth string, fifth fret, are also notes that live in a D chord. So sometimes you can even start there. And it's a beautiful option because you get the third and the fifth of the chord. So you have those two, which are great beginnings and endings. And then in the middle, you have that E with a G. It's a wonderful little passing chord to get to those two options. So, all right, so if you can just kind of, in your practice time, play a D and then go, okay? Or find just, uh, if you have a looper or something, you're playing electric guitar, loop a D chord. Or use the track that I provide. Okay, so the next chord now is G. And what we're going to do is, since we're here at F sharp, we're gonna go up one more Use this, what I would call more of the major fingering. And you're going to play a G on the second string, eighth fret, and a B on the fourth string, ninth fret. Now you get the first and the inverted third there. Again, don't worry about the terminology too much. I want you to get the fingerings down. And then you're going to take that step, that position up a whole step. And then you're going to end up on the twelfth fret, fourth and second strings. Notice how our fingerings haven't changed all that much. And what I want you to be doing is thinking about three moves for each chord. Three moves for D, three moves for G, and that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 12, over the G. Now when you play the A, you're going to start there on the 10th and 11th and you're going to play 10, 11, 12, 12, 14, 14. What you get right there is a beautiful C sharp and an E, passing B, D down to A and C sharp. So over D, G, A, Those are the three moves that you're going to use in this progression. And you're going to target the, the chords that are going by at the specific time. And you see that when I played it, I kind of played it really simply in the first few times. Then I started to kind of embellish a little bit more. All right, so let's hear the track and I'll show you how I can embellish it and I can have a lot of fun with this sort of thing. All right, let's bring the track in. All right, so I pulled the track up and I slowed it down a little bit, but let's talk first about the chords. First of all, it's just a simple D, G, and A progression. We're going to do D for four measures, G for two measures, back to D for two measures, A for two measures, and then D again for two measures, and then the cycle repeats. And over that D chord, remember, we want to play this shape, which is going to give us an F sharp and a D on top. And then we're going to use these two fingerings that really work well against the D. Now think about this, this first one and the third one are really targets. Those are gonna work over every D chord. And this middle guy is going to be our passing interval. Okay? Same thing's going to go for the G chord. But we're gonna start it way up here on the G and B notes. Then we're going to use this fingering again up a whole step on frets 10 and 11. 
and then we'll end up on the 12th fret. And again, the third one and the first one here. And this one's the passing in the middle. That's what you want. Now when we go to A, A is here. And we want those three. 10, 11, 12, 12, 14, 14. All of these are occurring on the strings two and four. All right, so over the D chord, let's try it. Let's just hear the track. I'm just gonna play those three really simply with our pick and second finger on the right hand. We'll go to the G chord, start here. We can end there, remember that's legal. Passing down to our home base there, up to A. Let's try it again even slower. We'll start on home base, D and F sharp, and up to our third one. Now we're gonna to go to the G and the B. We're on the D chord now, so we want to play our D connections. Up to A. Then I walked them all down in succession. Okay, so what I did there was when I went from the A, I played every A I know, I caught the G on the way down, then my D shapes and my connecting connection back to my original D shape. Now I'm not going into heavy theory here because I don't want to confuse you by saying it's a sixth or an inverted third. I know as soon as I say that it might already present some confusion for some of the beginners out there. But what, what I did when I first started learning this is I was playing Almond Brothers or Jimmy Buffett or any of that kind of stuff where, you know, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I learned some patterns and I learned how to target chords and then I reverse engineered it later on and that proved to be really helpful. So think about three for D, three for G, three for A. Now, if these three chords were transposed to a different key, the pattern would actually stay the same on the guitar. If we were in E or F or G or whatever, as long as we found those particular chords, we would be able to use these shapes and these patterns. That's further on down the road. But this is just a little teaser. But when we play the track, let's go back to the top, and we'll talk about some other techniques. We were playing at unison here with our pick and our first finger. Let's try sliding in. You've heard that before. How about all training? Mix and match them. There you have it. So you can play around with these and have a lot of fun, but I'm, I'm gonna guess that this might be new to a lot of you. And just having some different techniques and some easy chord progressions to play over like D, G, and A might be a really great place to start. And I just thought, hey, if you enjoyed that track that I did with Keith from 5 Watt, uh, this would kind of go right along with it and be a good place to start because I use this technique in a lot of the melodies that I played in the song there. Um, when you watch his video, you'll be able to download that track. I'll of course include that in the video description as well. I'll include this track and I'll do a simple whole note 
um, or even you know half note uh, transcription of this as well. Okay, something easy to get your hands and your right hand around as well. All right, lots of fun. You can incorporate this into your electric guitar playing. If you got a guitar with a tremolo or a Bigsby and some reverb, this sounds beautiful. Use some tremolo, whatever. Um, yeah, a vibrato and tremolo. That's what I mean. In any case. I had a lot of fun putting that together, and I hope you enjoy it when he puts that video out. And uh, if you came here from that video, welcome. I hope you stick around, and I hope you subscribe to the channel because I do videos like this all the time, um, generally on a weekly basis. So there's always something new. Jump into the channel and see what else I've taught on. I think you'll dig it uh, if you like this lesson. All right, so I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Thanks for sticking around. Please subscribe to the channel. Give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to ring the bell so you know when I put new content out. All right, I'm Corey. I've said enough. I'll see you on the next video.